The novel begins with the Circle of Lords meeting to determine whether or not they should accept Abelotha's offer of an alliance to destroy Luke Skywalker and the Jedi Order. The Lords are divided, but in the end, despite his reservations over Abelotha's intentions, Grand Lord Derish Vol decides that the Lost Tribe of the Sith must accept Abelotha's offer. Vol then contacts Gavar Kai, who has brought Abeloth and ship to Kesh, and tells him that they must delay Abeloth's arrival on the planet so they can prepare a celebration for their powerful new ally. After Kai relays this information to Abeloth, the entity is skeptical and suspicious of Vol's motives, but accepts the conditions. Abeloth then tells Kai that he and everyone in his fleet should return to Kesh to visit with friends and family members. Kai acquiesces and spends the night with his wife, Laka. The two discuss the implications of their daughter's actions and her choice to side with the Skywalkers. Gavar kills Vestara's pet Yuvak, Tick, as a result of convictions that Vestara must be punished. Eventually, Abeloth is officially welcomed to Kesh with a lavish parade and masquerade. During these events, Grand Lord Vol closely observes Abeloth to understand her motives. After all of the festivities are completed, and Vol retires to his bedchamber and is assaulted in his dreams by Abeloth. However, Vol lures Abeloth into a mental trap and launches his own assault on the dark side entity. But when Abeloth is attacked, she sends out a force shockwave that destroys Kesha's capital city of Tav, killing millions of citizens, Sith and non-Sith alike, including Laka Kai. Vol is weakened while Ship picks up Abeloth and leaves with her. Depsite his wife's death, Gavar Kai and the Sith under his command remain loyal to Abeloth and accompany her into hyperspace. Later, Abeloth views footage of an interview with Rokari Kem, the beloved leader of the Freedom Fighters of Karas, and takes great interest in Kem. Luke, Ben, Vestara, and Jaina Solo discuss a list of ships' possible retreats, including a number of planets with strong historical links to the Sith. Jaina suggests that they investigate Korriban first, and proposes that Vestara accompany the Jedi on the investigation. Luke agrees, though he has reservations about taking the young Sith to a planet so heavily steeped in the dark side of the Force. When they do investigate Korriban, specifically the Valley of the Dark Lords, they're confronted by dog-like guardians known as the Tukata. Vestara speaks to the Tukata in the ancient Sith language to ward them off and to ask them to lead the party to any other Sith on Korriban. While the Guardians fulfill their first demand from Vestara, they're unable to fulfill her second request due to the fact that there are no Sith left on Korriban. When she reports all of this to the Skywalkers and Jaina, she neglects to mention that she had a third demand for the Tukata, if there are any more Sith who come, the Guardians must tell them to hide for their own safety. On Coruscant, Galactic Alliance General Merritt Jackson is replaced by former GA Chief of Staff Wynne Dorvan as a member of the Governing Triumvirate, which also includes Kuwati Senator Haydnat Treen and Jedi Master Saba Sebatine. The Triumvirate and their chief advisors are doing their best to manage the Galactic Alliance's affairs in the wake of former Chief of State Natasi Dala's fall from power. They are primarily concerned with the series of revolutions on slaveholding worlds that have resulted in the formation of new anti-slavery governments that wish to join the Galactic Alliance. These developments all favor the machinations of Imperial Moff Drickel Lesserson and his co-conspirators, include Treen, Jackson, Coruscanti Senator Fost Bramson, GA Admiral Salina Perova, and General Starvin Thal, who all seek to overthrow their respective governments so that they can rule in their wake. A new member is added to their conspiracy, a new senator from a recently liberated world, Cameron Sulder. Meanwhile, Dala remains on the loose in the galaxy with Boba Fett. The bounty hunter reveals that he and his Mandalorians have discovered that Lesserson was responsible for starting Freedom Flight specifically so they could cause trouble for Dala make it easier for his conspiracy to stage their coup. Dala allies herself with Moff Porik Vansin and they lead Lesserson into a trap in Imperial space. There, Dala offers an ultimatum to Lesserson. Either she will kill Lesserson for his betrayal and reveal to the galaxy evidence of Lesserson's connections with Freedom Flight, or the Moff can join her in fulfilling her plans. Meanwhile, the Squib trio of Imala, Sly, and Grease meet up with the Solos in order to divulge Dala's whereabouts in exchange for credits and safety from their Imperial pursuers. The Squibs carry out their end of the bargain, but when they meet Imperial Head of State Jagged Fell to ask for amnesty, the alien trio are forced to reveal that they had also stolen an imperial chemical that reverses aging. 
Jag blackmails them into returning the chemical in exchange for amnesty. Luke, Ben, Jaina, and Vestara's search for Abeloth and her Sith allies leads them to the ancient Sith world of Dromund Kos. There, they confront a strike team of ten Sith Sabres loyal to Abeloth led by Gavar Kai. While the Skywalkers and Jaina defeat and kill most of their attackers, Vestara is forced to fight her father. With Gavar's mind clouded by Abeloth's influence, Vestara is able to strike him down. This experience provides the last push needed for Vestara to embrace the light side of the Force. Ben and Vestara ultimately admit their love for each other, and she asks to become a Jedi apprentice. After probing her thoughts for deception, Luke sees that Vestara is sincere in her desire to become a Jedi, and accepts her into the Order. Vestara's redemption also allows Ben to view his late cousin, Jason Solo, not as the Sith Lord Darth Kedis, who he died as, but as the good man he once was before the Second Galactic Civil War. Afterward, they return to Coruscant, with Luke's sentence of exile from the GA Capital world officially lifted since Dala's deposition, in order to accomplish two goals, to search the Jedi archives for clues about Abeloth and her allies' whereabouts, and for Luke to make an announcement. First though, Luke decides that Saba Sebatine won't be punished for killing Master Kent Hamna, as she did it for the good of the Order. He then declares that the Jedi Order shall become a separate entity from the Galactic Alliance. This effectively dissolves the GA Triumvirate, prompting the Galactic Alliance Senate to hold an emergency session in order to elect an acting Chief of State. While the Jedi prepare to leave Coruscant, Jagged Fell meets with the Solos, who give him the custody of escaped GA convict Tahiri Vela. Tahiri, wishing to atone for killing Grand Admiral Galod Pelion, offers to serve as Jag's bodyguard until such time as she can stand trial in an imperial court. Jag accepts this arrangement, though he has no desire to see Tahiri come to any harm. As the Jedi depart Coruscant to investigate the Sith world of Upexar, Leia stays behind in order to help advise in the Galactic Alliance leadership, while Tessar Sebatine and his fellow Barabal Jedi secretly guard the Jedi Temple from the caverns they nest in. In the aftermath of the Jedi's departure, Senator Sulda and many other newcomer senators in the GA form an anti-Jedi subcommittee that substantially influences the vote for acting Chief of State, instead of frontrunner Wynne Dorvan being elected, former terrorist freedom fighter Senator Padnell Oving is sworn in as the Chief. But Oving is sharp enough to realize that his voters decided on him due to his simplistic leadership style, which they believe would allow them to manipulate him as a puppet. So Oving hires Dorvan back in his old position as Chief of Staff in order to help Oving cope with the political machinations of Sulder's faction. As it turns out, Cameron Sulder, whose real name is Ivar Workin, and all of the other senators in the Anti-Jedi subcommittee are really the human members of the Lost Tribe of the Sith doing their duties whilst their Kashiri colleagues scour the Jedi Temple. The subcommittee quickly has Leia arrested on trumped-up charges, but she does not resist. As it turns out, Luke was aware of the Lost Tribe's infiltration of the GA early on, which was what partially persuaded him to remove the Jedi from the Galactic Alliance and Coruscant. While this does allow the Sith to secretly control the government, it gives the Jedi time to deal with Abeloth, Ship, and their Sith allies. When Abeloth and the others are taken care of, the Jedi will swoop in on Coruscant and wipe out the remainders of the Lost Tribe in one swift stroke. In the meantime, Leia gets involved in a new conspiracy circle called Club Buatu, which includes the newly reawakened Admiral Nek Buatu, his uncle Eremuth, Wyn Dorvan, and a few others. Their intention is to expose the Lessison conspiracy still boiling within the Galactic Alliance. Because of all this, the Lessison conspiracy gradually dissolves, beginning with Starvin Thal telling Senator Treen that it's time to disband. Treen kills Bramson, making it look like he died of old age, and then retires from politics in order to return to her homeworld of Quat. Perova is caught by Club Bua too, but before she can reveal any information, she is killed in a refresher by Ivar Workin Sith. Jackson is forced to commit suicide by Thal, who in turn goes into hiding, and the Imperial Alliance conspiracy ends. Meanwhile, Jag confronts Moff Tolga Tells on the experiments the Squibs discovered, which leads to him shooting Jag aboard the Bloodfin and Gatels reporting to Dala that Jag is dead. However, unknown to Dala, Gatels actually staged the whole thing, only stunning Jag and then defect to Dala. In an attempt to stop Dala's plan for becoming Empress of the Imperial Remnant, Jag, together with the vanguard of the Empire of the Hand and his own loyal forces of the Remnant, 
track her down to a meeting of her more irregular fleet and the forces of Lesserson, Vanson, Trevin, and Gatels, surprising them in the Exodo system. With Jag attacking her from the front, killing Trevin and his forces, and Gatels turning on Dala, it looks as if Jag can defeat Dala quickly. But the tide of the battle changes when Lesserson destroys Jag's hidden base, the hollowed-out moon Borleo, as well as the Pelion hidden near the moon. Jag, Kthirashuktalu, and Tahiri manage to escape to the Bloodfin, commanded by Admiral Vita Rage, but now face a hard battle. Grand Lord Vol, arriving on Coruscant, learns from Lord Workin that Rokari Kem, the new and charismatic senator from Karas, is not who she claims to be and could be a threat to the Sith. Vol decides to kill her as a result, only to be killed by Kem herself. Kem then tasks Workin, in his guise as Senator Sulder, to get her elected as Chief of State in place of Oving. Using the Force, she gives the Chief of State a heart attack. Oving filibusters the Senate with a speech about his homeworld. Oving dies, and Kem is almost immediately elected Chief of State. She then takes up residence in the abandoned Jedi Temple, where she learns that Leia has escaped prison with the help of Club Bua too, but that one of the conspirators, Wyn Dorvan, has been captured. Kem then goes to Dorvan in order to learn what she can from him, and reveals herself to be Abeloth. Meanwhile, on Upexar, Luke leads the vast majority of the Jedi Order in the hunt for Abeloth, only to discover that she set a trap by using the body of Sith Saber Tolar Anax as a force bomb. The Jedi manage to escape, though the explosion sets of a massive ground quake. At the same time, Ben, Vestara, and Natua WN are tasked by Luke to explore the inactive lava tunnels below the planet and are attacked by a mutated dream singer, while fighting it, Ben is incapacitated by hallucinations created by the beast. Vestara, seeing no other way to save his life, kills Natua by feeding her to the beast, which then retreats into the tunnel. Despite managing to save his life, Making the choice to kill a Jedi instead of trying to fight the beast some other way makes Vestara realize that she might be too much of a Sith to ever truly become a Jedi. The novel ends with Vestara reflecting that one day, she will be forced to completely return to her Sith roots, and which may require her to kill Ben as a result.